Hello everybody, Jordan here, the PH is silent. Let's continue to talk about Om. Om has a population of about 3 million, over 80% being human and the rest mostly halflings. Om's made its wealth through trade. The cities here specialize in importing and exporting goods from neighboring regions. It is a nation of merchants, the place where caravans start and end. Ships leave for exotic ports and return with gold. Om really took off with the discovery of Maztica, which lies in the far west, across the ocean, creating a new city in Maztica called New Om. Om maintains a large colony on the distant tropical continent and profits greatly from its trade. People in Om are obsessed with wealth. The wealthy seem to control everything, which was made especially true when the wealthy merchants reformed the government during the creation of the Council of Six. But currently, by 1479 DR, the Council of Six has been regrouped as the Council of Five. Am is home to Lake Esmil, which is a dark blue lake that plummets to unknown depths. Rumors speak of an aquatic monster that lives in the lake, much like the Loch Ness Monster. The western shallows have given the sea a green color as mineral springs flow into Lake Esmil. Many believe the tales of the sea monster to be nothing more than Balagos, the red dragon that lives in the area. And although it's true that Balagos often bathed in Lake Esmil, the monster of the lake is actually more than a dozen pythosars, who live in the deep cold waters. They've been there since the days of the creator races. The pythosaur isn't in the 5th edition monster manual, but I did find it in the AD&D book Lands of Intrigue Part 2, Om. It's 120 feet long with a 70 foot neck, a really large animal that has the ability to swallow their victim whole. The major cities exist along the ocean, rivers, or Lake Esmil. The capital city is Athkatla, and is one of the busiest ports in all of Faerun, mainly due to the trade routes with Meztika. The marketplace here is twice the size of Waterdeeps. That is, before the Spell Plague, when Meztika was lost to Faerun, being transported to Abir, gold flows freely in Athkalta, transporting vegetables, slaves, jewelry, strange relics, pirated goods, and more. Above the bay is Gold Spires, a temple to the goddess Joaquin, nearly as large as a small town. Mentioned in my last video, Amians have a poor view of arcane spellcasters. This is due to certain wizards that released a series of plagues and monsters, some by accident, others intentional. Divine spellcasters are looked upon favorably, though. Many deities are worshipped in Am, but some of the bigger ones include Bane, Chantia, Siric, Saloon, Soon, and Joaquin. Am has a high agricultural region that worships Chantia and hopes for good harvest, and soon for artists or actors, anyone who tries to create and bring beauty into the world. Joaquin is particularly interesting and a very popular goddess in Am. Known as the Merchant's Friend or the Golden Lady, her portfolio includes everything related to commerce and the accumulation of wealth through free and fair trade. Many merchants worship and pray to her. During the Time of Troubles, Joaquin walked Faerun like the other deities, but was determined to get back to her celestial spot. She ended up palling around with another goddess named Lyra, the Goddess of Joy. Since Joaquin couldn't travel freely back to the Outer Plains, she decided to smuggle herself back in. She found a path through the Astral Plane and then in the Lower Plains. She would have to make some deals with creatures from the Lower Plains to allow her safe passage through their territory. Believing that her divinity was trapped on Faerun and not her physical self, she handed over her divine portfolio to Lyra for safekeeping. She managed to contact a Greyhawk deity named Celestian, the God of Wanderers, who agreed to transport Joaquin to the Astral Plane. The plan worked, and her physical self was transported to the Astral Plane. Once there, she contacted Grizzit, an Abyssal Lord, to negotiate safe passage through the Abyss into the Outlands. In return, Joaquin would give Grizzit the location of a number of secret treasure hordes on Turil and across the plains. And on top of that, she would give him super useful information on the financial deals of the rival demons and devils, giving Grizzat an edge in the blood war. Grizzit lied about his end of the bargain and ended up trapping Joaquin in the abyss for an indefinite future, calling her his guest while they renegotiated the deal previously agreed upon. Grizzit's goal was to substitute his daughter in place of Joaquin, hopefully without anyone noticing. Now, back on Am, the worshippers of Joaquin saw their lack of divine powers and their prayers go unanswered. However, Lyra appeared to the worshippers of Joaquin in dreams and stated that she would step in for Joaquin until her return. The Church of Joaquin desperately wanted her back, and through some divine visions, her true location and predicament was revealed. Knowing they could not wage war on the Abyss, it was decided that a small band of powerful adventurers could cross the plains and rescue Joaquin, returning her to the Faerunian pantheon. This is outlined in the AD&D module for Duty and Deity. 
The players must climb the infinite staircase, use it to make their way to the abyss, rescue Joaquin, and break her out while being pursued by abyssal demons, ultimately returning the goddess to the Outlands, her home. The heroes are successful, and Joaquin is returned home. Lyra hands over Joaquin's divine portfolio, elevating her back to divine status again. Priests and priestesses rejoice at the return of their god. All is set right with Am once more. I mentioned earlier, but today Am is ruled by five noble families, the Council of Five. The nation is richer than Baldur's Gate and Waterdeep. Its influence is curtailed by the unwillingness of its rulers to work together in the nation's best interest. The Spell Plague removed their financial success with Mestika, but after the sundering trade with the reappeared Mestika has begun again. Control has reached as far south as Chult, where Am oversees port trade centers. And that's it for Om. There's more to talk about, I'm sure, but those are the highlights I found interesting. Let me know if you think you'd start a game in Om, or maybe a walking cleric from Om. Thanks for watching, everyone, and I will see you next Wednesday.